welcome to hotline tv show subscribe if you haven't subscribed for more splendid videos than this today we have a history of simbi nyaima <coughs> the history of simbi nyaima has two dimensions in regard to its origin a mythical story that explains the origin of the lake through a curse on mary making villagers who denied a needy woman shelter and food is the first version the second story has it that the lake is simply explained as a result of ge ge geological processes that give rise to caldera lake like any other found elsewhere the two explanations hold but the cultural explanation remains so strong that even scientists who are aware of geological processes and explanations seem to accept the myth associated with the lake over the centuries it is believed that simbi nyaima came into existence long before the arrival of jokarachuan currently occupying the area the occupants of the area by then were a low sub clan known as Jawaswa, who are thought to have been the first occupants of the area. After Jawaswa, people then came to another group of immigrants known as Jowagwe, who was in turn followed by Jokagan. Other groups also occupied this area in successive settlements and passed passed to other places before Jokarachuan eventually arrived and have been the occupants of the area up to the present the settling of southern nyanza has been elaborate, elaborately discussed by historians odede like odede 2000 and dal to 1990 uchie 1985 ogot 1967 jowaswa have been mentioned as belonging to the first wave of settlers who eventually moved into northern Tanzania to occupy the current Tarime districts. They have also been mentioned to have scattered in several places within Nyanza province and particularly among the Jokano where they form part of the sub clans. The Jokano people later moved and settled in Simbi Nyaima, Kindu Bay, area before relocating to current localities around Aero and Kisumu areas. Myth and legend of Simbi Nyaima as a branding strategy. The Simbi Nyaima myth holds that one cloudy afternoon, an ugly smelling woman entered a village at Kolonde, which was located near the current Simbi Nyaima. Lake. She found the villagers in celebration. The men of the village were taking traditional beer, while at the same time feasting on meat from animals that had been had been slaughtered. Women were busy ensuring that men got enough beer and meat for the feast. The strange-looking woman entered the feasting arena and requested food and shelter. On seeing the woman and especially her unpleasant looks and odour, the feasting villagers did not listen to her request and instead able-bodied men were instructed to throw her out of beer vein and escort her out of the village. She did not receive any food which was abandoned as the feast was just nearing its climax. As the woman did dejectedly left that village she took shelter in the next village where she was welcomed by a young woman with her children the young woman gave her food which she ate as she warmed herself to the fireplace when the stranger woman had eaten she asked the young woman if she was married the young woman replied in the affirmative and said Her husband was at a feast in the next village. 
The strange woman then asked the young woman to go to the feast to get her husband. She obediently left to go for the husband. Unfortunately, when husband learned that husband learned that it was the strange ugly smelling woman who they had thrown out of the beer hall, who was the one calling him, he slapped his wife and sent her back home refusing to go with her. On reaching her home, the young woman narrated her ordeal to the strange woman, stating how the husband had beaten her and up and refused to come with her. The strange woman then advised the young woman to take her children and leave the village as quickly as possible. This command was immediately followed by the woman and no sooner had they stepped out of the village that a heavy downpour with a frightening lighting started. It continued to rain for 24 hours and the whole area containing the villagers got flooded. Flooded. The village where the strange ugly woman, smelling woman, was thrown out because she made together with all people and animals. The village sank during the heavy downpour due to a curse from the strange old woman on the greedy villagers who refused to give her shelter and food. To date, it is believed that this curse is what caused the origin of Simbinya in Malik. Over the years, Different versions of the story continue to be told. While it is agreed that there was a celebration on this particular afternoon, it is unclear the type of celebration it was. Other versions state that it was a marriage party and the, that the villagers were celebrating the marriage of their daughter. In this version, however, there is a lack of details as the man who was, who was marrying the village daughter is not mentioned. Yet another version says that the villagers were celebrating a bountiful harvest. Here again, there is a lack of details, and the season and season of the crops are not mentioned anywhere. Most historians and anthropologists leave it at the level of villagers having a part, a celebration of some sort. Details are simply name, an interplay of nature and mythology in the Lake Victoria. Dr. Pio Hayombe, F.Z.R. Odede, Professor S.G. Agong. And Professor L. Mosberg are an unexplained, making the whole episode a mystery and a myth as they are rarely explained in totality. Consequently, like Simbinya emerges after mysterious woman appears and pronounces a curse on the village and villagers by invoking a heavy downpour of rain. She, however, saves one hospitable woman and her children. and where they go remains part of mystery that make up the myth. This history and cult cultural narration of the origin of Simbinyama contrast greatly with the scientific and geological point of view. Geologically, Simbinyama was formed as a result of weakness in the earth crust, which triggered volcanic eruption, leading to the formation of Caldera Lake. The same process that led to the formation of Uma Hills and process that led to formation of Uma Hills and the hot springs currently visible in the area are the same ones that led to the formation of Simbinyaima Lake. The days for these activities are those to be in the 17th century, about 1680. This coincides with the early settlements in the area. The choice of whether to go by the cultural myth or take the scientific geological explanation does not in any way deem the radiance of Simbinyam as a cultural and natural heritage site. This history and nature make it a place worth conserving and developing to the benefit of future generations. The lake supports migratory birds, especially from the rift valleys, lakes, and hosts up to 700 white stocks in a good year and occasionally up to 6,000 flamingos.